story of healing and addiction that hits especially close to home for all of us here at ABC News. When our own Bob Woodruff was injured covering the war in Iraq back in 2006, the powerful painkiller fentanyl was used to treat his nearly fatal injuries. But in a remarkable twist, one of the army medics who helped to save Bob's life would later become addicted to opioids himself and nearly overdosed on fentanyl. Tonight, we bring you Bob's conversation with that former medic on his journey from addiction to recovery. It's the fourth part of our series, Poisoned, America's Fentanyl Crisis. Three men are dead after a possible fentanyl overdose. While the growing fears and fatalities caused by fentanyl have gathered more and more attention. It's another case of a fentanyl overdose. What rarely makes the news is the positive side of fentanyl when it's prescribed as originally intended. It was created in 1959 for chronic pain, anesthesia, sedation, 50 to 100 times more potent than morphine. Do you think there's going to be more mechanized? While covering the war in Iraq, fentanyl became part of my life. To Baghdad, Bob Woodruff, ABC News. In January of 2006, my cameraman Doug Vogt and I were embedded with the U.S. and Iraqi forces reporting about the status of the war in an area where insurgents were detonating more and more bombs. While traveling from village to village, an explosion nearly killed us. And after we were rushed to the Baghdad hospital, this is the only video taken, shot by a member of the medical team with his cell phone. This is the only photo of me in this emergency room, and this blurry video shows one of the medics who saved me, Sergeant Dave Williamson. I was badly hit, and there you were. <laughs> you helped to save my life. Well, I've talked to several people that, you know, I've met after, after I've treated them, and, and it's, you saved my life, and you say, and I, I, I don't, I just don't see it that way. Do you have any idea how many people you did help? Uh, my forward surgical team, um, we had 1,804 trauma resuscitations. Suddenly that ID exploded, we were knocked out. What do you remember? Um, I remember everything. You and Doug came into the trauma bay. Doug Boat, my cameraman with me. And Doug was doing a whole lot better than you were. And the unit that, that I was with, it was just such a, a well-oiled machine. And we, we knew that you were in, in serious, serious, serious dire straits. We just needed to get a tube in your throat and, and have you breathing off machines. But from there, we went to um, CT because that was going to be the determining factor of do we let you go uh, and just provide comfort measures or you know do do we work it? Let me go. It, There's you, a good chance. There is a very solid chance. And you you actually had uh, a body bag on the underside of your stretcher. And normally they don't put that under there unless there's a... The only time that, that we did that would be if a patient had moved from one area to another and they weren't going to come out of the second area. Given the severity of my injuries, he injected me with multiple drugs, including his most powerful painkiller, fentanyl. Our go-to drug uh, was fentanyl. And so at the time, the fentanyl that we had was given in micrograms, and it was in glass vials. You knew exactly how much fentanyl was in there. Mm -hmm. You had complete control over it, and you knew that this was the kind of opioid that would kill my pain. Yes, so yes. So this is what it's meant for. It's what it's meant for, yes. But yeah, we, we had a very solid understanding of what it is, what it's capable of doing, and also how dangerous it, it was. But when the war began to wind down and before the U.S. withdrew from Iraq, Dave left the military and, like many others, was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. There's a lot that that people deal with, you know, and you're, you're looking for anything to numb the, the pain, even though it may not be physical pain, it's something that just doesn't go away. It just stays with you, it just gnaws, and, and it's 
You know, you're, you're trying to emotionally um, cope with everything that happened over the course of 18 months for, you know, 12 to 14 hours a day, seven days a week. You don't have time to deal with it then. And now you're out of the Army, and now you've got time to process it. Now at home, the same man who had used fentanyl to save me ultimately became addicted to fentanyl himself. And like so many others, it started with prescription painkillers given to him after surgery. They prescribed me Percocet. I rifled through this Percocet like it was, you know, nobody's business. And then I just wanted to do it more and more and more and more and more. And then I had a very close friend of mine um, introduced me to Oxycontin. And then I started doing uh, Oxycontin. And then I started doing more Oxycontin. And then... You're buying this on the street. Mm hmm It's this sense of, of loneliness, of solitude. And before you know it, it's spiraled out of control. That spiral descended from painkillers to meth and heroin all the way to the bottom. So it was right here where you were injecting me with fentanyl to save me. And I, I just, I'm, I look over your left elbow right there on your arm. Um, what is that? Uh, yes, uh, so my addiction had gotten really bad to the point where um, I was an intravenous drug addict and um, I missed my vein completely. They had to remove a whole bunch of infection yes. out of there. Uh, they, they told me that had I come in the following day, um, I, I would have lost my arm. And it was incredibly painful. And the worst part is it, it didn't even stop me from, from being an addict, you know? I thought, okay, well, I'll never do that again. Well, you know, naturally, I, I can't, you know? But I just found another vein. Despite his struggles, he married his high school sweetheart, Jessica. But addiction had found her, too. I had a pretty bad car wreck when I was 17, and I was prescribed pain meds. And it kind of escalated from there. And then Oxycontins came around, and that was a huge problem for me. That was really when things got pretty bad. As Oxy got harder to get and more expensive, they turned to the streets together. Well, you know, I know plenty of people that are on heroin, so let me just try heroin, you know? And so I felt better on heroin than I felt on Oxycontin, and that cost me a tenth of the money, you know? And so next thing you know, you're hooked on heroin. But heroin is just, a, it, it just spirals really fast. And then fentanyl entered their lives. The two of them had been taking opioids for years. We were using pretty heavily and had gone to get some pills. But one night, what they didn't know is this time those pills were laced with fentanyl. We're sitting in this parking lot and David did his and immediately was, you know, nodding out and was in and out. And I thought, wow, he did too much. Then I started throwing up, and I thought, oh my gosh, I did too much. But I knew that I hadn't done more than what I normally do, and I was sick. I mean, it was scary. It was, it was very scary. Did you know there was fentanyl in that one? I did not. I knew something was different, that it was too strong. It's dangerous. It's scary. Is it the most dangerous? It's the most dangerous drug I've ever come across. While still using, they had their first son, who at age three witnessed what they had been hiding for years. One of the things that was a turning point was uh, my three-year-old walking to my room when I was shooting up, and I screamed at him to, to shut the door. And I mean, is this what I'm gonna do when, when he's 30? I knew that there were resources out there, and I knew that there were people that had beaten their addictions, and I waited until I ran out of money, and when I ran out of money, I went to a methadone clinic. I got seen by a doctor, 
and uh, uh, started the program. Since I was rushed out of Baghdad, ultimately to the U.S., we did not talk again until a decade later when Dave watched this story on ABC. It was 10 years ago that Bob and Doug were badly injured by- It was on a Sunday, and it was on uh, Martha Raddatz's show. The IED went up, they were- She was doing a story about your 10-year your anniversary. And so I turned uh, the volume up, and Bob, I just want they were talking about you. And I rewound it, and 100%. Said, oh my God. I said, that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's me. That's you. you. Know? And yeah. Welcome, everybody. Not long after he helped me back in 2006, my family and I started a foundation to help other veterans wounded in the wars. Yeah, they just blown around from town to town. To so in 2018, Dave and Jessica joined fellow veterans and families for the Stand Up For Heroes fundraising event. Yeah, we're back into the dirt of this hard land. Dave is now a specialist, tracking down high-performance engine parts for exclusive or often rare cars. Damper. Do you ever use fluid dampers, or, or do you...? They now have three sons. Jessica is a kindergarten teacher, and with the help of therapy and support groups, today Dave and Jessica say they have stopped using opioids. Their hope is to keep drugs out of their lives forever. Do you have any more desire still to try it? I mean, that once you're an addict, you're always an addict. It's just that we don't have the, the want or the need or the desire to, to chase it anymore. We both see how our lives were then, and we see where our lives are now, and we like where we're at now. We know how slippery of a slope it is. So even if we did try it again, hey, just, just one more time. One more time, is it gonna be one more time? It's going to be, how are we gonna get out of this again? Do you think they'll be proud of you as being those that actually decided to give this up for I, them? I would hope so. Yeah. If, We're proud of ourselves. Yeah. If any of my children are proud of me, are proud of their mother, then at least one of us did something right. Such powerful reporting there by Bob Woodruff. Our thanks to him. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.